What's up CAD fans? We're going to talk about tangent surfacing in Fusion 360. Let's dive right in. So in this video we're going to go into greater depth on surfacing, how to create great curves, and how that's going to reflect into great highlights in the end. So what I have on screen here is a very simple design of a baking dish built in solids. Now building in solids is quick and easy, aka sketch profile, extrude, add fillets. That's easy, but it has some quality repercussions. Now if I hide the edges and zoom up into this inside surface, you'll see that there seems to be this hard edge between where the end of the fillet is and the flat surface of the inside of the dish. And if we jump into the render mode, you'll see that in the rendering, the highlights will bounce off of that hard edge. Now of course this is not always going to be a problem. However, if you want a large curve, then you're not going to want awkward transitions on the surface. And if that curve was just a small radius on the inside of a stamped sheet metal dish, it wouldn't be as big of a deal as a much larger curve on, let's say, a in plastic injection molded part. So now in the render mode, you'll really see where the light wants to collect, and it's right on those fillet lines. So now let's make a dish with some more complicated curves. So let's throw this away and start from scratch. So as usual, I'm going to start with a sketch on the top plane, and this is going to become the bottom profile of the dish. So I like these center constrained boxes because I like just to have the whole dish and everything I create to be kind of center or in space. And all of these lines, all of these outside lines, I'm going to turn into construction lines because none of them, of course, are going to be part of the curve network. So in my last video, I talked about how I can create tangency in curves by constraining the ends of the spline to the x and y axis. So they would either be straight up and down or perfectly horizontal. And maybe you want something more complicated. So rather than just constraining them to the axis, I'm going to constrain the anchors of this spline to this line at a defined angle. So at the corners of this box, I'm going to create lines that are going to jut out into space and I'm going to define the angle. And because the curve I'm making is a quarter of the dish, I need to define where the spline is going to start, and that's going to be at the midpoint of the dish. And I can turn all of these lines into construction lines. And now I can connect the lines with the spline, and I only really need two points to control the curve of this spline. And I'm going to constrain the anchors to these construction lines. And now I'll quickly mimic the same type of curve to finish up this quarter of the dish curve profile. So I've got to slow up right here and say that I want this whole thing to be parametric, so I need to add a dimension. And so I need to know how far I want this endpoint to be from this box. And it's just another variable in controlling the curve. And so I'm just going to play around with these spline anchors until I end up with something I'm happy with. And I need to add one more dimension on the top. And I need to close this off because this is going to be a surface. So I now have the bottom profile sketch done. So what I like to do now is to create the top profile sketch. So I'm going to offset a plane and sketch on that. And I'll quickly whip up this sketch, and I'll make it one continuous spline rather than two. So I now have the top sketch done, and I'll need to work on the side profiles. And this is the most important part. Well, maybe. But let's get to work. So I'm going to start a sketch on this front plane and connect the endpoints of the previous splines from one profile sketch up to the next. Now I don't want the top of the curve to be vertical, so we're going to do the same thing that we did on the first sketch, where we're going to make a line and define the angle. And now I need this bottom line to be tangent with the x-axis, and so I can pull it outward as long as it's connected to that point. And again make the spline connecting the two points, and connect the anchors to the construction lines. And I forgot to add a angle dimension on this line, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Great, we have one more spline to make to finish up this framework. 
So I'm going to quickly jump into this. And remember, it won't come out of the mold if this line is vertical. So we got to put this at an angle. And the bottom construction line, of course. And we're ready to add the spline. And put the anchors on the construction lines. You'll also see that I can constrain this anchor point to the midpoint of the construction line, which means I can control the velocity of the spline coming out of this construction line with the overall length dimension of the construction line. Now dimensioning can pretty much fill its own video, so I'll save that for another time. I do want to point out this cool tool called Curvature Comb, and that will show you how smooth your spline is. So this comb that fans out from the spline will show you the velocity change or tightness of the turn in the spline and will exaggerate where you have smaller turns that you can't see immediately. It's a really useful tool because it just gives you a better understanding of the curves that you make. We can get more in depth with it in another video. But I'm just going to quickly remake the spline so it's closer to the other side. Almost there and done. So now we have the framework that's going to make up this corner. And just like in my last video, we're going to turn all of these sketch profiles into surfaces and patch between them. But there's something different about this one. Remember that those top lines that come off those side curve sketches aren't perfectly straight up. They come out at an angle. So rather than extruding them, we're going to use a sweep tool. So let's get the others out of the way first. So I'm going to use the extrude on this side, and then the extrude on the second side. And then I'm going to fill in the bottom with the patch tool. And there we go. Now the thing is, I can still fill this in. So if I go to my sketch, showing that extended line, I can patch up this whole network of lines. Now that's enough information to make a curve, but I want to make sure all of the tangencies are accurate in where I want them to be. So I want to create another surface that's going to snake around that top edge sketch. So I'm going to use the sweep tool to grab that extended portion of that line and drag it all the way around that edge. So now that I have all my curves, I'm going to hide the sketches and inspect my work. It's also important to hide the sketches because now that I'm going to patch it up with the patch tool, I want to make sure that I'm selecting the edge of the surface rather than just the sketch line. So I'm going to go to the patch tool, disable the chaining, and click all of my surface edges and make sure that it is on tangent mode rather than just connecting them. So now that I have the curve that I want, I can hide the other surfaces and mirror it around. And I'm just going to speed through this. Okay, so now I'm going to mirror my parts around. So I'm going to mirror over this corner to create half, and then mirror over the half to create the full dish. And there we have a smooth surface. So now I got to sew it together. So I'm going to combine all of its parts. So now it's one continuous surface. And now we can thicken this up to create a solid. And there we have it, one dish with smooth curved edges. But the real trick is in the rendering, because the whole point of this is to create great highlights on curves. So I'm going to speed this up again to get to the render mode. And I'm going to add a fillet to this top edge, just so there are no harsh corners in the rendering. And we have arrived. So I said before that a dish like this is probably going to be made of something like an injection molded plastic. So I'm going to pick a material for this dish that looks pretty plasticky. So in the appearances folder, I'm going to go up into... I want something pretty shiny to reflect these highlights really strong, so I'm going to pick a glossy paint. I'll just go with red. And you'll see that it's quite reflective and it's going to be pretty hard to find edges. Well, because there really aren't any on this model. All of the surfaces that we made are tangent with each other, so all of the reflections are going to be smooth as well. And so there we have it. One smooth dish and a 10-minute video. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Thank you for your time, as always.